Jeff, a difficult afternoon yesterday at Old Trafford, and I imagine it was something you've never experienced anything like that before. Just tell us your recollection of events. Well, we were um, sitting and enjoying Manchester United's amazing hospitality um, yesterday, um, looking forward to probably the highlight of the season for many of our supporters and indeed the players. Uh, when um, Edward, with the chief executive, um, came to me and said that there is a um, an incident in the stadium without elaborating and that at that stage the kickoff is likely to be delayed by 45 minutes. So you take that in your stride, you know, I don't think I even asked what the incident was and, um, you know, just ca it carried on uh, relaxing. Um, then we had another message to say that um, a device had been found. Uh, we didn't know whether this was a hoax device or whether it was um, a live device. And understandably, uh, the police, uh, the Greater Manchester Police, um, with Manchester United, took the decision 100% right um, to evacuate um, that part of the stadium, I think, on a, uh, um, initially. I think there were about 50,000 people in the stadium um, at that stage and you know I have to say that I have the utmost praise and respect for the Greater Manchester Police and Manchester United, all the officials and the staff who worked um, to evacuate the, uh, the stadium in an orderly fashion because people can panic, especially when they understand the significance of why they're being asked to leave. And I don't think it could have, I don't think any other football club, you know, could have handled it better uh, than Manchester United did yesterday. They also helped yourself, uh, directors and the staff and players, didn't they, in the aftermath? They made them feel at ease. Absolutely. Um, you know, Edward Wood um, kept me informed, um, along with um, his support staff, of precisely what was going on. They asked for my support in um, sort of different um, situations. I was able to go and see the players and make sure that they were comfortable and relaxed and were fully aware of what was happening. So in terms of getting the information to us, we were being notified at all times of what uh, the plans were for the day. Um, and it developed then, Richard Scudamore was a guest um, at the game, so to have Richard um, alongside me uh, with Ed, uh, it meant that you know the three of us could uh, formulate a plan as to when the game was going to be rearranged once we had no been notified that um, in the interest of safety uh, the police had recommended that the game be postponed. Once the safety issue had been sorted and everything had been cleared up with that, how pleased were you to get the game, which was obviously what we were all there for, sorted yes. out so quickly? Well, you know, you know, as you know, um, this all happened uh, to a satisfactory conclusion on the flight back. Um, I was absolutely thrilled, and again, I'd like to thank, um, you know, Ed, um, the Greater Manchester Police, and the Premier League for their support in facilitating this rearranged fixture so quickly. It was in everybody's interest. For Manchester United, had it not taken place, I believe, um, either today or tomorrow then there was a great possibility that, understandably, the manager wouldn't want to play uh, before the cup final on Saturday. And then it drags into a week after the cup final, or maybe a week longer. And then you've got um, all the disarray of players from both sides planning holidays. You have the international squads forming up. So whether a manager releases his players or retains them, then you have international issues uh, to contend with. So I just think it could not have been stage managed in a better way to get this game on uh, tomorrow evening. Um, and we hope that um, it'll be a spectacular as well. And of course it wasn't just the staff and the players that were inconvenienced, our fantastic fans, they were in brilliant voice yeah. before the game and they'll obviously yeah. be really disappointed, but you've done what you can to try and help them. Yes, I mean my first thoughts went out to our fans, you know, you know that you're in a safe place by virtue of the fact that you're there and you know the players were in a safe place um, in the dressing room, so for our fans uh, to be the first to um, have to contend with the um, the, the uh, evacuation uh, from the, from the stadium, um, and then to actually comprehend, you know, just what has what has happened that they've been involved in an incident that could have had, you know, catastrophic uh, consequences. So as long as I knew they were safe and sound, um, I was relaxed. They have been incredible throughout the season. You know, you cannot praise a group of supporters more. Home and away, they've been behind the side. And this was the culmination of many dreams. You know, I think I said um, in a tweet earlier in the day, you know, that this was the theatre of dreams and what a way to finish the season, our inaugural season in the Premier League, to go to one of the greatest sporting arenas in the world, play in front of 76,000 people 
at a game that was going to be highly charged because Manchester United, we know, uh, prior to kickoff, had every single opportunity of playing in the Champions League next year. So we knew we were going to get lock, stock, and everything, you know, thrown at us. And the boys trained hard to focus on this all week. It was the one game that everybody in the squad was looking to take part in, and huge disappointment when it was called off. Eddie's job now, of course, is to raise the morale, and they are professionals, and they will go out there on Tuesday and represent the club the way they always do, with a great amount of passion and pride. Just tell us a little bit more about the supporters, because obviously you've said how fantastic they were then. You have moved to try and help them. Yeah. Understandably, some people might not be able to get there tomorrow yeah. night, but you are trying with the, with the coaches. Just talk us through what you've tried to do. Well, there. the club made an instant decision. Um, you know, you think about your supporters um, first and foremost. Um, you know, the team travelled up the day before. Often supporters leave home, at, you know, early in the morning and get back very late at night. And, you know, it's an over 600 mile round trip. So we made a decision um, this morning officially, but we, each of us had made our own mind up that we were going to provide free travel for our fans. It's the very least that we can do um, to show our respect um, and thanks for the support that they've given the team all year. So anybody that has a match day ticket for Sunday, we're providing free coach travel uh, for all the supporters. We haven't put any limits on it. The only way that we are limited is by getting numerous coaches at such short notice to convey uh, the players, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, supporters up to Old Trafford on Tuesday night. And I'm thrilled that the club have acted instantly and it's, I think it just shows that, you know, together anything is possible and we, uh, you know, embrace our supporters in a way that we do not want them to be uh, disadvantaged because of the incident that was completely out of our control.